So with that in mind, let's talk a little bit about, let's just go through the reminders again. Point of care ultrasound and trauma, the fast exam can do for us. Four diagnoses, hemoparacardium, pneumothorax, hemothorax, or hemoperitoneum. So nowhere in that list is parenchymal injuries or retroperitoneal injuries, femur fractures that are bleeding and causing shock, not in there. Cardiogenic shock from blunt myocardial injury, not in there. Spinal shock, not in that list. So there are other things to think about in trauma that may cause shock that the FAST exam doesn't cover. However, the most common ones, they are covered. So we'll start to talk a little bit about some of the basic reminders of what findings are and what we're gonna look for, the approach to the exam, and then we're gonna talk about how we can use that information to help us take care of patients. Quick reminders about acquiring the image. Most of the time we're gonna use the a low frequency a curvilinear probe is probably the ideal probe if we have it available. But if we have a phased array probe, that's perfectly acceptable as well. Our preset's gonna be an abdominal preset. A lot of machines nowadays have fast presets, so you may use that. And remember, primarily the things you need to keep in mind and manipulate on the machine are depth and gain. And we'll just go through the way I like to approach this. And there's debate about this. Sometimes you'll hear, if you include the chest, you'll hear people call that the E-FAST or the extended FAST exam. In my world where I teach and what we teach our students and our residents and our fellows is this is the FAST exam and anything less th than this would be considered an incomplete FAST exam. That's just Minardi's teaching and Minardi's style. So if you don't want to ascribe to that, that's up to you. But I like to start with the chest. If you work in an environment where you have different opinions, you can you can really start wherever you want. And maybe you might target depending on what your clinical s suspicion is. So if the patient's short of breath having chest pain, you might start with the chest first. If they're hypotensive complaining of abdominal pain, you may start with the abdomen first. You're going to pick the order based on what your local practice is, what your clinical concern is. It's important that you kind of establish a routine and do it roughly the same every time and know what the findings are and how to look for them. I like to start with the chest, looking for pneumothorax. Then I usually go to the heart, then the, the right side, which should cover the dependent area of the chest, and then the right side of the abdomen. Notice I'm not saying just Morrison's pouch. It's an examination of that area of the lower chest and abdomen. And we'll talk about kind of all the structures we need to take a look at. Then repeat on the left side. Left side's a little higher, more posterior. And then we come to the pelvis, looking for, again, free fluid uh, around the bladder or the uterus. And just point out that when when we're on the sides, sometimes we may need to rotate the probe or with the indicator pointing a little bit towards the bed. So on the patient's right side, the indicator is maybe at approximately, you know, 10 30, 11 o'clock. And on the patient's left side, it's maybe at like 1 30, 2 o'clock. That helps us get between the ribs and image these structures and get a better view of the structures of interest. So now let's just watch a quick little demonstration of the FAST exam and normal findings and what that will look like. All right, we're going to do our FAST exam. Now FAST exam, we want it to be quick. We don't want to switch probes, so we do the whole thing with the abdominal probe. And the order doesn't matter that much. I have my order that I like to go in, but just do it about the same all the time. But I usually start with the heart. Now we're in an abdominal probe in an abdominal setting, so we're going to have our indicator towards the patient's right, right under the xiphoid. And we're going to ask him, big breath and hold. And we can see the heart well enough to say there's not a pericardial effusion. Relax. And if the, that view is no good, don't even do anything else. Just pick the transducer up, go up and find the heart in this parasternal position. And again, just looking for effusion and is the heart beating or not. No other detail than that. After we get our cardiac view, we just work our way down the rest of the abdomen. So we're gonna start over here on this right side. Indicators towards the patient's head. We come right across from the xiphoid, about the mid-axillary line. And we're trying to examine from above the diaphragm, up here. into Morrison's pouch, potential space. We're just fanning ceiling to floor until we get down to this pericolic gutter where we see the bow gas pattern, looking for free fluid. Yeah, 
and so that looks negative on that side. Then we'll repeat on the other side. The only difference on the left is we go a little more towards the patient's head and a little more towards the back. So we're way back here. There's spleen. We look above the diaphragm for fluid in the chest, fanning, sealing to floor. There's the kidney. There's the bowel gas pattern. in the pericolic gutter. So that's negative on both sides. We come over the bladder next, indicator towards the patient's right. We're looking for free fluid behind or anywhere around the bladder. We fan down till it's gone, all the way up to the ceiling till it's gone. No free fluid there. Then lastly, we decrease the depth, same transducer. Looking for pneumothorax on each side. We want to come to the part of the chest that's closest to the ceiling. And just looking to confirm, we see lung sliding in that spot, and we do, ribs, ribs, and sliding. And then, same thing on this side, ribs, ribs, and sliding. And that's our FAST exam.